When you hear the word lazy, what comes to your mind? How do you define the word lazy? Imagine after working hard all year, you finally get a chance to take time off from your job, get away, and take a vacation. You are on the beach, relaxing in the sun, feeling great, and someone walks up to you and calls you lazy. That would be weird and inappropriate, right? Because being lazy on vacation is perfectly appropriate and normal. But every day in chronic laziness is what I want to talk to you about today. Psychology Today says we are being lazy if we can do something that we ought to do but are reluctant to do it because of the effort involved. Newton's first law of motion states that an object in motion tends to stay in motion and an object at rest tends to remain at rest. I believe Newton's law can be applied to humans as well. Laziness at its core is standing still, not moving, being inactive. Remember, stagnant water is a breeding ground for disease, bacteria, and other pathogens. And we get sick when our bodies don't remove waste and excess fluids, right? Likewise, Christians who never grow, who remain the same and accept the status quo, don't accomplish anything for God's kingdom. Movement is required for us to be healthy, naturally, and spiritually. When most of us think of laziness, we think of a person sitting on the couch for hours and days on end watching TV. When the Bible speaks of laziness, it isn't talking about physical inactivity so much as a mindset that leads to the inactivity. The Bible calls a lazy person a sluggard, which means you are habitually lazy. Laziness unchecked becomes a habit that will eventually lead to a way of life. Scripture says, a lazy man has desires, but no work or action to back up the desires, and that there is profit in working, but mere talk leads to poverty. It also says, if you don't work, you don't eat. So the Bible is clear that lazy people will end up poor, hungry, broke, and with a bleak future. The Bible also speaks of laziness as idleness, which is a magnet for trouble. It says, idle hands are the devil's workshop and idle lips are his mouthpiece. Even spiritually speaking, faith without works is dead and Christians are known by their fruit. Fruit grows because seeds are planted and well cared for. We will only have fruit in our lives if we nurture our relationship with God and follow the teachings in the Bible. Scripture says we don't live off bread alone, but out of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And we should, as the Bible instructs, stir up the gifts that God has placed in us. That means use your gifts and talents, which require you to do something. There's a story in the Bible about a rich man distributing money to three of his servants. He goes away and returns to find out what each of the servants did with the money they were given. Two of the servants earned more money, while one hid his money in the ground and did nothing with it. So the rich man rewarded the two men who made money, and he punished the servant who did nothing. Similarly, God puts us on earth to accomplish something. He wants us to do something with the gifts, the opportunities, and the resources he gives us. He expects a return on his investment. Every follower of Christ has something to do on earth. It's called purpose. You will never hear God say to you, well done, thou good and faithful servant, if you don't do or accomplish anything. Scripture says, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So if God has prepared something for each of us to do, that means we have to be active and engaged in order to get it done. Also, we are told to make disciples of nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them God's commands. You can't do that being inactive. God is progressive. He wants us to grow and go to new levels, and he rewards steps forward, even baby steps. He says in his word, he will make those who are faithful with a few things ruler over many things, and that righteousness is revealed from faith to faith, and that we shouldn't despise small beginnings. Followers of Christ and laziness don't go together. You can't follow someone standing in place, standing still. It isn't possible. And we have to work while we can because scripture says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. For when night comes, no man can work. So there will come a time in your life when you can't work. So you have to take advantage of when you can't. 
The Bible uses the analogy of the ant to illustrate the effects of laziness. They store up food in summer and gather supplies at harvest. We are told to be wise like the ants, and we are cautioned about sleeping through life and being lazy because Scripture says it will result in you being poor as if you had been robbed of all your possessions. So it is important that we finish what we start. It is equally important that we start. R&B singer Brandy sings a song that says in part, you can't get to heaven half off the ground. Everybody knows almost doesn't count. So make your life count. Do what God put you on earth to do. Finish what you start. Start. Don't sleep through your life. Don't live on autopilot. Don't give up every time you fail or fall. Get back up, saddle up, shake it off and try again. Live your life purposefully. I pray that everyone listening to this episode today would rise up, take their bed, and walk forward in all that God has for them, that laziness would not be part of our language or our lifestyle. I speak productivity and fruitfulness in the lives of God's people. We will run our race well and finish strong. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Please hit the subscribe button so you can know when I post a new episode or prayer. Until we meet again, be blessed and bye for now.